immediately I wished that I had kind of ignored the frostiness and asked to look at that bag. Hey everyone, when I first started my bag collection I mucked up quite a lot really in terms of the things that I was buying and I actually have four bags on my bag shelf at the moment that are my biggest mistakes. They are, I'll show you them in this, they're my biggest mistakes because I bought them at the time, I loved them but I didn't really know what I was buying and now they are bags that are incredibly difficult to work into an outfit because they are so 2010. As I go through, I thought I would show you uh, like style for you, some of my favourite bags, bags that I think are really worth it, and also all of the clothes that I'm wearing, actually all of the tops that I'm wearing, I will link to all of those below as well. These have actually been given to me uh, by Lily Silk. everything is silk, and um, they also gave me a coupon code, uh, I hope you don't mind me talking about them, I really like them as a brand, and the coupon code and the links I don't profit from. The first thing that I really Really wish I knew or the first thing I wish I did was to ask I would how many of us probably more so depending on the kind of person you are when you first start out your collection it feels quite intimidating to go into these boutiques because first of all I don't like being got by by salespeople where I feel under pressure to buy something particularly if I've only really gone in for a look because I do plan on buying that item one day but it's not going to be today and I just want to see it in the flesh and decide yes it definitely is or no it definitely isn't the right thing for me but what I used to do is when I did go in to buy things which was rare, I preferred to buy things from Louis Vuitton because I could buy online because I didn't have to go into the store. Um, Chanel really scared me, I didn't want to go in there, although I did always want the classic flap. And when I did go into Chanel and when I did eventually go into Louis Vuitton as opposed to buying on the website, one thing I found very difficult was asking. I felt it difficult and awkward to once I'm looking at the bag that I thought I was interested in, I found it awkward to, if I changed my mind. Or if, for example, there was another bag on the shelf behind the sales associate and I wanted to look at that as well. Or maybe the bag I went in there to see, I liked it, but I didn't like the colour I thought I liked and I wanted to see what other colours it came in. I always felt that doing that, that I was kind of um, being annoying or being a burden. and. What I used to end up doing is I sometimes with one item ended up buying it because I liked the shape of the bag but I didn't like the colour weight of it and I bought it because I, I wanted the bag, how to describe it, I wanted the bag but I didn't know what other colours it came in. Chances are I might not have liked any of the other colours, but I wanted to know that I'd made the right decision. So I would always say that if you are going into the shop for the first time, if you're nervous, try and not be. Because at the end of the day, you're the one going in there buying the item and the chances are you're not going to see the person again after unless you go back in when you want to buy something else uh, in which case who cares you're going in to buy something you don't want to get buyer's remorse after where you walk out of the shop and you've got that pit in your stomach feeling where you've dropped all of that money let's be honest no one's going to go back into Chanel and ask for a refund so it's really important that you check and make sure that you're buying what you really love. Still on that point before I move on to the next one, don't assume that an item is out of your budget. This is a lot easier these days. When I bought my first bag, I don't know when, 2012 or something like that. When I bought my first bag, social media, it was harder to find out how much is that actual bag. And it meant that for brands like Chanel, like Louis Vuitton, you could go on the website, Gucci, you could go on the website, and you could buy online, you knew how much it was. With Chanel, they only really put prices on their website in recent years. Now, I always wanted a classic flap, but I assumed it was out of my price range, and I was scared of Chanel, because at the time, they weren't too friendly. <laughs> And I ended up instead buying other bags when really what I wanted was the classic flap. Storage. I have ruined a wallet and one bag over the years because of the way I stored things. Again, there are loads of videos on social media that show you 
like people's best practices on how to store things. It, um, let's say you have um, a couple of bags in your collection. One is Chanel and the others might be like artisan uh, Italian leather bags and your Chanel bag is that special bag that you pull out on special occasions and moreover you're more often than not you're using your non-designer bags or maybe maybe you have a collection and your collection's big enough that you don't necessarily wear one bag for an extended period of time this is something that I used to do and what happened to me was that I, where, I, where we used to live there was this kind of cubby hole sorry for anyone not in the UK a cubby hole is kind of like a space somewhere you can even get a cubby hole in your car just like a little space and there was space for shelves so we had a carpenter come over and make uh, bespoke shelves to go in this area and it was great I was able to put my bags on it but the thing is this cubby hole was not a million miles away from the bathroom and I had a bag that I kept on this shelf in its dust bag for a fairly extended period of time, let's say three to six months. When I eventually went to use the bag, the it was patent and the patent leather had turned a little bit sticky uh, to the touch and the wallet that was near it, which I've shown you before, it's a deal wallet, that, that I can't use. It is so sticky, that wallet. Even when you open the flap, it's like peeling back Velcro. And I didn't know what had happened. Well, it turned out it was the, must have been the steam coming from the bathroom whenever somebody had a shower, the door would open and the bag was there. The dust bag, which you would always think to keep it in. I now don't keep my bags in dust bags. The dust bag was obviously absorbing some of that moisture and it was holding it in and it ended up breaking down the top gloss layer of the patent bag. Make sure you don't keep your bags in direct sunlight at all. Even if, for example, you live in the UK and rarely, rarely is it warm or that sunny, but any sort of daylight, any sort of light that directly shines onto your bags will bleach the color. Don't get distracted. How many of us does this happen to? You're saving up for a bag. You've been saving up for months. The bag is 4,000. You've been saving up for a long time. You've just about reached a thousand pounds. You still feel ages away from it. Then there is a price increase and suddenly you need to find five and a half, six thousand, and it feels like you're constantly trying to catch up with it and you can't. Then what happens? Because it's been months, you end up being having your head turned and being distracted and you end up buying something like a Chanel wallet or a card holder or a pair of earrings or a brooch or anything from Dior, anything from any of these brands. And then before you know it, once the excitement has worn off on that small item you've bought, you realize that actually you still want the bag, only what you've saved has dropped right back down again. So don't be distracted. I've actually done videos on how um, in the past I've personally saved for luxury items. And I also made, if I can find it, I'll link to it. But I also made like a spreadsheet, like a document you can use that has always really helped me and it helps me focus and it helps me save. Two more. The next one is make sure you learn about what it is that you're going to buy. Social media is great that you can now do this. What do I mean about learn? Well, you might think that you want a certain bag. You've been to look at it. You're still saving, but you've been to look at it and you're like, yes, this is definitely the bag for me. But I would say to spend a bit of time while you're saving, watching uh, videos on YouTube of people that have reviewed the bag, because you might find that there are downsides to that bag that actually are a deal breaker for you. So for example, with the Chanel Boy bag, I've shown that before, that bag is one for me that I wish I didn't buy because there are downsides to that bag and that bag I now don't use. If I had known that, as I mentioned, I wouldn't have bought that bag. So before you go and buy anything, make sure you do your research and make sure that not only do you like the look of it and you've been to see it in the shop, but make sure it's not gonna be something that you end up buying, it's gonna get ruined, it's gonna get damaged, wear and tear's really bad on it, and you're gonna end up hating the thing. And then finally, and this one depends on the kind of person you are, but avoid trend bags. And I have a lot of you um, that say to me, why do you care so much about trend bags? I care about them and the reason why I share my thoughts with you are, you know I told you I've got four failure bags on a shelf that I'm never going to wear again. 
I, they're trend bags. They're bags that I bought not really knowing what it was that I bought. Uh, I bought them just because I liked them. And then after a couple of years, or actually with the Louis Vuitton bag, it wasn't even a year. Uh, it was not a long amount of time. That design just went out of style. And it's now something that looks really dated, but not in a cool vintage way for me personally. And it depends on your style. There are going to be some of you that like that you buy something that ends up going out of style because then you have something that looks quite unique but if you're not someone that likes that idea try and not have your head turned by social media instagram makes many a bag look really cool like the bottega chain pouch that um i feel like that was particularly popular was it last year or 2019 i'm not sure but if that was that's over two thousand pounds and that's there are other more classic bags you can buy for that money. And I really wish that I knew all of this before I started buying my bags. I remember the first bag I ever bought. I remember it like it was yesterday. And I had got my first, so I'd, I was so, 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 so close to paying off my debt. I had like not much left to go. And it was Christmas and I got a Christmas bonus. And the bonus was, decent like for the first time in my life and I got this bonus and it was I remember using it to pay off the rest of the debt and then what I had left I was like I'm gonna go and buy a bag and I ended up buying two like it was a decent bonus um the first one I bought was the Louis Vuitton which I ended up um, using for a couple of years and then it kind of dated quite quickly and then I didn't use it anymore uh, but the other one that I bought and this is what I mean about asking I went into Chanel I, I was like I've got the money I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna buy a bag and there was one in the window that was a tote bag and I asked to look at this bag and um, I do remember it was quite a frosty you know, situation. Anyway, uh, the bag was shown to me. Ideally, I wanted it in black. Well, ideally, I still wanted this classic flap, but I didn't even know what that bag was called. And I assumed it was gonna be so expensive, it wasn't gonna be in my budget. Guess what, I was wrong. I ended up buying this tote bag in like a beautiful color. It was uh, like a metallic bronzy color. And those of you who have been with me years might remember that bag. Um, and I bought it in this colour, but it wasn't what I wanted. And I wish, immediately I wished that I had kind of ignored the frostiness and asked to look at that bag in black and also asked to look at the classic flap before I made my decision. And I, I did like the bag, but I didn't love it. I always felt in the back of my head, I wish I'd asked about colours and I wish I'd asked how much that classic flap bag was, but you know, I just remember the situation and how it was and I didn't ask and um, that was that. And I don't actually have that bag anymore, although it's a lovely bag uh, and it's very classic, it just wasn't me. So uh, yeah, I wish I knew these things before I went and bought everything. As I've mentioned, um, all of the clothes I'm linking below and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.